Hello friends, Clage back with a new video series for Guilty Gear Xrd. The rollback patch has been going for a few days now, and I want to do a series of short beginner style guides. Not for every character, this is definitely not going to be a full roster thing, but for the characters that I think are excellent characters to pick up for beginners, the characters that have very straightforward kits, a very straightforward game plan, and this is going to be just a rundown of how they work, their good buttons, how their special moves work, and how their general game plan goes. This is not going to be super in-depth. This is not meant to be all the high-level decision-making RPS stuff that you take into account when you start playing Guilty Gear above that mid-level. This is a, I am just picking up Exerd. I want to check out this character that I've heard is fairly easy to pick up. Why are they easy to pick up and how do they work? So that's how we're going to do this set of guides. I'm going to see how they work. I'm going to try and keep these very short for guides. Uh, that's going to be the goal. So we're going to give this a shot, see how it goes. We're going to start today with Mr. Kiski himself, Kai. Kai is a very well-rounded character in Exert. He's very strong, plays a very basic game. He is a pressure tick throw kind of character who can also transition to zoning with his fireballs and he also has one of the most basic but one of the strongest okazeme options in the game that's very easy to set up very easy to run if you can learn how to get knockdowns and start playing kaizoki game you can play this character so let's just go through it we're going to dash through everything i'm going to show you what you need to know to pick this character up and how to get started so let's just go through the buttons real quick talk about the stuff that really matters and and how everything works so Normals. 5P. This is just a basic backup button uh, for, for everyday use. You can use it in your pressure strings if you want. 2P is usually preferred. This is a good panic anti-air button if, uh, if you don't have time to go for his other anti-air buttons we'll talk about in a moment. But 5P is just kind of a good all-around basic normal. Some shorter characters will crouch under it. It's nothing special. This is not going to be a go-to button for you. Stand kick. This button is an amazing standing low. Really, really good. Reaches for days. It's also active for a very long time. So this is a very good option if you need to meaty someone on their wake up and you want to stay out of reversal throw range so they can't just wake up and grip you. Great button for this. Also a good part of his pressure to check people, make them block low and not just crouch against you the whole time. It's also very good because it goes into Kai's core button, close S. Uh, this is one of the better close S's in the game. Really, really strong button. It has a massive activation range for a close S. You see, you have to be all the way here to get far S. If I'm here, you can still get far S. A little step closer, you get close S. This is Kai's pressure button. This is the button you're going to use to frame trap people, to extend pressure, to get people to flinch. This is just an all-around amazing button. It has all the cancel options you could want. It has plenty of Gatlings to keep pressure going. And th this is the button you're trying to get people to be afraid of. You want them to fear close S so that you open up Kai's other pressure options. So learn how to use this in pressure. Learn the ranges at which it activates because this button is basically one of the basis of Kai's pressure. Very, very good button. You'll want to use it a lot. Going back to Far S, this is just a nice, good horizontal poke. Uh, it's very laggy, so if you whiff it, that can be a bad time. It also has a bit of a hurt box on the end of it, so you can be swatted. But this is just a good button for controlling horizontal space. It's not great on block. It's minus 11, if I remember right. But it is special cancelable, so you can always keep yourself safe with a fireball or whatnot. And of note, this move, if you hit someone with a counter hit, uh, or you hit them crouching, um, you can actually combo into his down forward heavy with this. So, there we go. That's important because that combos into Greed Sever for a good mid-screen combo. So, this can be a very strong confirm button if you can recognize your counter hits, recognize your crouching hits. So, just good horizontal poke. Uh, stand heavy. You can kind of think of this as the counterpart to close S. This is just a version of Close Etch that reaches a little bit further and is a little bit safer. Special cancelable, so this is a, su a super easy way to end pressure, keep yourself safe. Uh, this is a great way to combo because it'll score you knockdowns and combo into Kai's other um, specials that score you knockdowns. Just an all-around good pressure button. This is also good for just poking at range, ca catching people doing something they're not supposed to do. If you counter hit them, you're going to get really good reward off this, so very solid button all around. 
and uh, last ground normal of the basic ones. Sweep. Let's start with this one because this is so important. Kai sweep is amazing. This button is active for a bajillion of years, and usually sweeps are key to a character because one they give knockdown kai really wants knockdowns so that's a huge basis of his game plan but the big thing about kai sweep is that it's very very non-committal not only is it special cancelable in every way this sweep is jump cancelable that is a very very rare luxury in guilty gear uh if you go up and do some pressure and you're not sure what to do because they blocked and you're afraid they might try and interrupt just get a dodge jump back you're totally safe you can even get a dodge jump back throw an air fireball Super safe way to end pressure. Really, really simple way to bail you out if you think you might be getting into a situation where they're going to try and interrupt you, steal their turn, that kind of thing. But a jump cancelable sweep is very, very powerful. Learn to love this button. It also has really good range, and like I said, it's active forever. This will catch a lot of people dashing in or using advancing special moves that don't have great hitboxes on the front of them. So, very strong button there. Uh, let's talk command normals real quick. So, Forward punch. This is your go-to anti-air button. This is upper body invulnerable basically the whole way through. It has a very good hitbox. This will stuff jumps and instant air dashes at you very reliably. You get a full confirm off it for an air combo. Let's just uh, let's go ahead and uh, have Soul jump here. Yeah, easy stuff. Not, you don't even need a counter hit for this. Just anytime you catch someone jumping, you're free to go into close S and just easy easy stuff all day so very very good anti-air button his other anti-air button crouching heavy this is an amazing vertical space control tool same thing it'll anti-air doesn't have quite the invulnerability that 6p does so if you're trying to stuff out an attack this is going to be your go-to anti-air but catching people dancing around above your head this will swap people out of the sky for days and it's very easy same thing just do a jump cancel easy confirm into damage nice and basic these two buttons are the no-fly zone. Uh, get used to the ranges these work at. 2H can also be a solid pressure button just to uh, add a little bit of block stun and block string in there. It doesn't have a lot of pushback, so it gives you a lot of options for like a delay cancel into a sweep, stuff like that. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, forward kick. Another staple of Kai's pressure. Uh, you can Gatling into this from a lot of things. It does create a gap in most ways you're going to Gatling into forward kick, but this is a pressure reset button. This is plus four on block. If they block this, it is still very much your turn. You have plenty of time to continue your pressure. It is special cancelable. So you have all sorts of options to do things with forward kick. Learn how to use this move. Uh, if you can get people to respect offense enough to let you reset them with forward kick, this has a lot of applications. Something as simple as this... Look at the amount of guard gauge this raises. Like, that has two gaps in it, but trust me when I say people are not going to want to mash against Mr. Kisuke here. You he will make them feel very bad if you if people mash against you. So, very strong command normal. Uh, same thing, forward heavy. Uh, same kind of button. Pressure reset tool creates a little gap, but this thing is a monster at raising guard gauge. Very, very good special tool. The first hit is special cancelable if you want to try and bail out with something. Uh, but this is very, very strong. Also, another excellent meaty normal if you don't have time to do any kind of okazime. Uh, just go ahead and let this rip on their wake up. Unless they have a reversal to do something about that, they're going to have to hold this. This move is also plus 11 on block. Uh, it is your turn. You absolutely can go into close S or plenty of buttons. It is your turn. You even have time to, uh, if you make them block this, you have time to dash in and do crouching punch. Um, so another very good button. Let's talk the rest of the crouching normals. Crouching bunch, another just good pressure button. This is used to start some of your basic pressure strings. This is also a great tick throw options to make people scared. Go up, grab them. You can chain it a few times, chain into your other low normals like low crouching kick. Crouching kick uh, is basically a, a slightly worse version of standing kick in terms of the reward you get from starting a combo with it, but it does reach further uh, and it's even on block. So again, another pressure tool that allows you to do some stuff. Gatling's into close S, so that alone makes it very good. Um, the cancel window for Gatling on this isn't huge, so keep that in mind, but still a good little poke button. You can check people with it. Crouching slash is just a nice long-range low. Uh, this is a key part of 
some of his okies. So you'll be doing stuff like empty jump into low to start some combos that we'll talk about. Uh, and this is also just a good button for checking to see if they're not blocking their toes. You know, some people like to stand up against Kai because they fear things like greed sever. They shouldn't. We'll talk about that in a minute. But just a good button to check and see. It's like, hey, you guarding your toes? You making sure you're not fooling around? That kind of thing. Uh, let's see. What do we have left? Uh, only last command normal. Uh, down forward heavy. Uh, this is mostly a combo filler, combo filler button. Like I said, on counter hit from far S, you can combo into this. Uh, you can also combo into it from other normals. Um, it's pretty friendly on the Gatling options here and there. But the thing to note about down forward heavy is this move is very bad on block. Very, very bad on block. Uh, you need to special cancel this if you want to stay safe. In general, this is the normal you can worry about the least when you're first learning this character. Don't focus too much on down forward heavy. It is very not necessary until you're getting certain confirms. And as far as a pressure reset tool goes, you have forward kick and you have forward heavy just way better options for that sort of thing so for the most part just kind of keep in mind that this is a good way to combo off your far slash and if that's all you're using it for that's going to be more than good enough to pick up the character uh jump normals real quick jump punch and jump kick are your air to air challenge buttons jump punch is faster jump kick goes much further uh this is a very good air to air challenge option if someone is jumping up at you you can go up and meet them with this very easily same thing with punch but again doesn't reach quite as far so these are air to air um combat tools you are you are looking to uh you know outpoke someone if you're both taking the air at the same time neither of these are particularly great jump ins however you can use jump uh jump punch to go after a jump slash for an extra uh extra overhead when you're doing jump ins so keep that in mind. Jump S, just a good all-around jump-in button. Uh, also a decent air-to-air -air button. Mostly is used as one of your main combo tools in the air. But this has a solid hitbox, and it's jump cancelable. So you can attempt to bait out things, uh, be a little cheeky here and there. Uh, last jump normal, jump heavy. Just your This is your primary jump-in button. Uh, it's also a decent space control tool in the air if you need to try and shut down uh, horizontal space in front of you mid-air. But in general, this is a great... Uh, jump in for basic purposes both jump s and jump heavy can be used in safe jumps um so if you knock someone down and then you go in do a safe jump good way to bait out reversals uh a quick thing about jump heavy you can do it very late to start the animation it'll just whiff and you will land and be able to do things like go empty low or empty throw so you can do like that saw the animation started nope just kidding throwing so uh, good button for that. That's all the that's all the normals. That's all all the buttons. Very they're very much what you see is what you get. They're very intuitive to use. Just mess around with Kai's Gatlings, get a feel for pressure and stuff like that. You'll be able to to do stuff in no time. Uh, so let's talk about other parts of Kai's kit. So throwing, throwing is the backbone of this character. Kai has amazing throw options people do not want to mash against this character he has so many cancel and pressure options he has a lot of moves that are plush on block so throwing is very very threatening with kai because one knockdowns are powerful this character two throw actually gives very powerful reward in the corner if you have meter to roman cancel it very very strong option available to him so uh Learn how to throw with this character. Learn how to tick people. Learn how to make them afraid of what you're doing and go up and, and hit them. Uh, I will share one minor advanced technique in this video, and that is option selecting with doing forward and slash plus heavy slash. Uh, if you are in throw range, you're going to throw them. If you do this out of throw range, you're going to get close S. And close S is real good if someone flinches and thinks you're trying to throw. Uh, you get a counter hit with this, that's going to hurt. You get to do real damage. So this is a super easy option select to do. It's literally just using two buttons instead of one. That's it. That's all you got to do. Learn how to play with that. That's a very powerful tool to have at your disposal. So the one advanced technique I will put in this guide. Next, let's go over specials. So we're going to start... A little bit unorthodox obviously kai has a fireball and a dp and stuff but we're going to talk this one first split seal this is the cornerstone of kai's overall offensive game plan split seal creates the grinders the grinders when you shoot a fireball through them become enhanced and gain special properties including giving him access to his best possible okazeme this is also an amazing pressure ending tool because it is usually gapless or has very little gap so it can work as a frame trap and this is only minus one on block 
Uh, no one is doing anything to you for a block split seal. That is still, you're going to get pushed back into a range where you can probably do far S, and you're probably going to beat most characters' pokes in the game there. So this is a very safe way to end your pressure while giving yourself a benefit of having a grinder on screen and letting you have some options to play zoning. So let's talk about grinders and fireballs now. So moves that create grinders. Split seal does it. Jump dust does it. And stand dust does it. Don't worry about stand dust for now. You really do not need to focus on stand dust while just learning Kai. It's kind of a beginner's trap to try and hit people with overheads all the time. Plus, this is one of the slowest dusts in the game. Um, but it does create a grinder, so that's why I'm noting it. The grinders are very powerful. You can use these to control space. Uh, jump dust does have a hitbox, so if people run into it and try to swing, they will get a counter hit while the animation is coming out. Um... Kai's fireballs are good. Stun Edge is just a good, basic, I control space fireball. He has the slash and heavy slash version in air. The heavy slash version on the ground is charge stun edge, uh, which is mostly going to be used for knockdown Okizeme situations where you can't get the juicy uh, Okizeme. But in general, it, Kai is very competent at playing a basic Shoto style zoning game. Uh, he does have a Dragon Punch. Let's talk about that real quick. Vapor Thrust. Vapor Thrust is an okay DP. It is not amazing. It's very easy to bait this move. It's very easy to low profile. You can use this as a reversal, but it is dangerous. It is it is high risk, modest reward for reversaling with this, this Dragon Punch. So when I say Kai zones like a Shoto, um, that doesn't mean you should be doing Fireball into Dragon Punch. What... What you should be doing is if you're zoning with fireballs and they try to come over in the air, you have this button and you have this button. That's how you swap people out of the air. Don't be looking to vapor thrust for your anti-air button. Yes, it will work, but it is very high risk for not great reward, whereas anti-airing someone with forward punch or with crouching heavy is way better reward for way less risk. Don't get in the habit of trying to anti-air with this. Uh... Back to the fireballs real quick. So yeah, your your air versions control space quite well. If you have a grinder, these become instantly more threatening. If you have a grinder and use charge stun edge, you get the very enhanced version. This is the basis of Kai's Oki game plan that we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, but a very important thing, obviously, wire C is an important part of Guilty Gear Exart. Kai has one of the better ones. Stun edge wire C is a license to skip the neutral game. If you're tired of trying to earn space or want to get in so you can start your pressure and you got 25% to burn, have fun. You you now control neutral. It is your button. Learn how to wire C stun edge. This is powerful. This is a very, very, very powerful tool. This Being able to just overtake neutral with 25% meter is one of the hallmarks of strong characters in Exert, and Kai absolutely excels at it. Uh, other specials. So, Stun Dipper. This is... A five-frame startup low-profiling special that reaches really far and gives knockdown when it hits properly. Uh, on block, this is terrible. Uh, you will get hammered if this gets blocked. As soon as you have 50% meter and can roam and cancel this, you have license to disrespect things. Uh, five-frame startup for a move like this is bonkers. I'll just put it that way. And it low profiles instantly. So this will go over a ton of high pokes, a ton of high specials, and you will absolutely stuff people with this button. Again, if you don't have meter to cancel it and it gets blocked, you are taking a big risk. But do not underestimate the amount of ways you can disrespect your opponent's offense with Stun Dipper. This also is very important because this is one of Kai's knockdowns. So learning how to knock down with Stun Dipper is super important. Um, you kind of have to delay it. At certain ranges for it to work. If you try to combo into Stump Dipper up close, it's not going to combo. Uh, ideally, you want to do stuff like 5H and combo into it, or you want to go into like a Far S and combo into it. But if you're trying to combo into Stump Dipper and you're not getting knockdowns, you need to delay it or you need to push the opponent back further during your combo. That's why that's happening. So very important to learn your Stump Dipper knockdown range with. It's a very useful tool. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? We've talked Split Seal. Oh, the import, another important one, Greed Sever. This is the Beginner's Trap special. Uh, people will think, okay, cool, I've got my overhead, and now I'm going to be able to open people up. This is my mix-up tool. Greed Sever is not a mix-up tool. Don't believe anyone when they tell you this is a mix-up tool. If you have 50% to stay safe and you want to try and check someone with an overhead, sure, go for it. You can do that. This is a zoning tool to control airspace in front of you, and more importantly, this is a low-crush tool. 
if people are sticking out lows with a lot of whiff recovery on it, this will blow that up because Kai goes off the ground and your their low moves are not hitting you. Uh, do not rely on this to try and open people up. If you're doing pressure and you're trying to catch people napping by going to greed sever, even once you get past basic beginner lever, they're going to hammer you for that. Don't do that. You will die. Uh, so do not crutch on this move. Do not use it as your, your go-to mix-up tool. That is probably the single biggest beginner's trap there is for playing Kai. You can almost pretend this move doesn't exist except for combos and occasionally checking for zoning purposes. But early on, if you ignore this move, uh, you're probably going to be a better Kai player than a lot of people early out the gate. Not even remotely joking there. Uh, real quick, supers, so overdrives. Sacred Edge is, if I could do supers today, this is a very good combo extender if you want to spin meter. Um, it's very easy to combo off this if uh, you combo into sweeps and you do stuff like Sacred Edge, dash up and get, you know, an extension and a knockdown. Uh, if you want to spin 50% to a combo, I highly recommend learning how to use Sacred Edge as opposed to Roman canceling for a couple reasons. One, the combo is going to scale better. Two, Overdrives do not make you incur the tension gain penalty that Roman cancels do. So you're going to be able to regain your meter faster if you use Sacred Edge as an extender as opposed to doing something like, you know, this. That kind of thing. Uh, so good tool to use for that. Uh, he also has Ride the Lightning. Uh, Ride the Lightning is whatever in this game. Uh, the most noble thing about Ride the Lightning is that Ride the Lightning is his burst super. If you do Ride the Lightning with Dust instead of Heavy Slash... Uh, you get the burst version, which has very, very low minimum or very high minimum damage. So it's a good way to close out rounds for combos that are in the air where you can't get a knockdown. If you launch them into the air and, and see they only have like 10% left, this will close out a life bar. No problem. But uh, this is not a great reversal tool. This is not a great interrupt tool. Don't look to ride to lightning to uh, to try and get out of pressure. That's That's going to be a very poor use of spending meter. So... That's all the moves. Let's talk about how Kai works. So again, Kai plays a basic pressure game. He doesn't do anything fancy. He just plays good, safe, solid Guilty Gear offense, especially in Exert. You know, you can extend stuff with meter just like every other character. But the thing about Kai is he's so good at just stealing turns by resetting with moves that are not easy to interrupt. Forward kick does it. Forward heavy does it. And then he has all these moves that make for great tick throws. Like I said, throwing with Kai is very powerful. People do not want to mash buttons. Once you start making them afraid of moves like close S, they're going to have to at least semi-respect your pressure, or you're just going to frame trap them all day and they're going to die. Very easy to kill someone by doing that. As soon as they start respecting any of your pressure, putting your throw game to work will get you a lot of mileage. Good things will happen with throws with Kai because... If you get a basic throw, if you don't want to do anything fancy, charge stun edge. This works on the vast majority of characters in any situation. You do charge stun edge and you get to run up behind it and continue pressure. If you don't like how much time you have, you can wire see it and just go to town. So a very basic version of Kai's knockdown game plan there. And then at, once you get used to all the pressure, the ways to reset pressure, the ways to threaten at range... Uh, Let's talk combos and the general game plan of how Kai Kiski wins rounds. So, in general, the for combos mid-screen, you should be learning how to do one thing. And it is comboing into split seal. Very basic stuff. You can do this anything. You can do, 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 and do split seal if they're close enough. But in general, I recommend just learning how to combo in the sweep into split seal. It can be any route you want. You can do dun 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 split seal. You can do dun 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 split seal. As long as they're close enough for split seal to hit, you're golden. Because if you knock them down with split seal like this, and you do charge stun edge, guess what they have to hold? That allows you all sorts of oki. That charge stun edge through a grinder is Kai's strongest oki option, and it isn't fancy, but boy is it effective. So let me show you how this works. So let's have bad guy block. We're going to make him not block low so we can get knockdowns. And I'm going to show you how the basic Kai Kiski Okazeme games work. So we go up, we get our knockdown. That's a little early, but... There we go. And you get to go in and do an air dash mix-up or an empty jump mix-up. 
if you really want to make this hyper effective, you spend 25%, you FRC the charge stun edge, and then you put them in a, in a situation where they have to hold a very, very scary mix up. So just go like this. The basic premise of this, and I'm going to do it without the charge stun edge on, on so you can see it, is you do a running jump and you either do a late air dash into an overhead or you go up and you empty low them with, with crouching S. When this happens, the rest of the charge stun edge going through the grinder is going to combo them and you get a full confirm that you can knock them down again and start this whole process over again. This is your win condition with Kai Kisi. Any knockdown into his Okazeme that is very loopable, stuff like that. Let's uh, let's show you what happens when you confirm with a low here. Same thing, and I can go right back into a grinder. Very very straightforward. Uh, let's just do the whole sequence one more time. So, do do do. YRC. You knock down, go back into to split seal. Uh, let's see, how do I want to do that? Let's just do. Yeah, we'll just do this. That'll work. So, we score a knockdown. Split seal, stun edge, YRC, empty low, split seal, stun edge. Same thing. They have to hold this again. You can go high. You can land and go low. You can also land and tick throw them. Uh, this is why mid screen, all you should be worrying about is getting knockdowns. You, your best knockdown is from split seal. If you can't combo into split seal, learn how to combo into stun dipper from range. Like I said, you can do stuff like this. Uh, that's a little too far for far S. And that's too far. Stun edge can be kind of, or stun dipper can be a little finicky, but it's worth the time to figure out how to knock down from there. And uh, obviously, just going into sweep if you don't can't reach a grinder, you can just do regular charge stun edge oki. Okay. That also works just fine. Uh, but in general, your goal mid screen should just be getting into this every single time because it's so threatening. In the corner, same concept. You have all sorts of things available to you. In the corner is where Kai's damage skyrockets and his reward gets a lot better. He usually has to spin meter to get his damage because his best combos are what we call vapor thrust loops. Uh, he also has split seal loops. Those are a much more advanced combo. We're going to focus on the beginner stuff. This is a beginner's guide. Uh, so in the corner, your throw becomes infinitely more threatening because with meter, Kai can roam and cancel and get a full combo. That's a knockdown. The cool part about this combo is that if you finish it, you get a split C out of this. So we do throw, Roman cancel, close S, down heavy, vapor thrust, down heavy, vapor thrust, close S, split seal. There you go. This is the combo you should be practicing in the corner at first. Learn how to get this combo off a throw and a Roman cancel in the corner because it's going to score you a lot of damage. Once you have this loop down, and it does need slight adjustment depending on character weight. If they're lightweights, you're going to want to use only crouching heavy and omit the close S. If they're heavyweights, you have to modify the combo for it to work a little bit because obviously they fall faster and have more gravity. But this is a combo you should practice right out the gate because it's very simple and it gets you exactly what Kai wants. There you go. Right back in your mix up. If you throw them again and build meter, cool. Do it again. That is picking up Kai in a nutshell. Uh, we're under 30 minutes. I'm happy with that for a quick beginner's guide. This is uh, this is an easy character to pick up. I would say Kai is probably the single easiest character in the game to pick up and run his base game plan and be effective with at early levels and have it easily transition into higher levels as you get more familiar, learn more confirms, learn more pressure and mix up options. Uh, you can play a very basic game plan with Kai and he'll excel. That's how he wins games by having basic pressure, by having simple but effective Okazeme, and by just having a lot of ability control space and having really good buttons that excel at controlling space. The only thing Kai is really weak with in Exert is that his air combos mid screen rarely give him good knockdowns. And his damage overall is on the lower side compared to your average cast member. But when you have as well-rounded of a kit and as good of Oki that Kai does, low damage is not that much of a problem. This is a strong character and a very easy one to pick up. So that's going to do it for this first guide. I will be doing some more of these down the road for some other good beginner characters to just quickly cover what their stuff is, how it works, and how to play them at the base level. So... 
Hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, uh, shoot me some stuff in the comments down below. If you want to subscribe, support the channel, I definitely appreciate it. I have channel memberships now. Going to be streaming more Guilty Gear on YouTube. Didn't stream this week. Got a little busy, and I've just been remembering how to play Exer, to be completely honest. I'm very rusty with this, this game, so uh, it wouldn't have been particularly fun to watch me uh, flail around and remember all the things I forgot over the past three years. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you appreciate this, and uh, let me know if it helped out. Catch you on the next one. Peace.